it is time to put this red Dyson DC07 back together. We need to turn this lovely pile of parts into a working cleaner. So, this is following on from part one, if you missed that, where we completely stripped this apart. And obviously part two, we best pull it back together because I imagine there could be people sat here like this going, how the heck do I do this? Well, let's save you for getting told off and get this back together. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums and fans of Dyson. How are you today? Yes, this is every single part of a Dyson DC07 brush control. Admire it because it is now about to be put back together. So what I should do is we should put it back in roughly the same order that it came apart. So we'll do the cyclone first. I should go and get the tools back out, get all the parts we'll need out of there and to the side, and we'll get this thing nailed back together. So, with everything together, we can make the start, and the first thing we'll do is put the rubber grommet back onto the release rod housing. Then, put the spring onto the release rod, it will sit at the end, like so. Then simply push the rod up through the rubber gasket. There's no need going one way at the top because there is a, a keyed notch. And you need to hold it with the rod as far in as it will go. Then with your other hand pop the bin release finger puller into the cyclone top. And then hold the release rod bracket on while you grab one of the long silver screws with the thin head. Like so. And if all went well, your bin release rod should move up and down very nicely indeed. Then we can put the rubber seal on. Ooh. There we go, and then it can be fed into the cyclone top, but you push it on and you hold it very far out, because we need to put the bin release rod into the back of that clear clip. That's what pushes down. If your bin release, if your bin flap doesn't lock shut, you just need a new clip. You can buy those very cheaply online. Oh, there we go. It's just like helping a cow give birth, really, it's just smaller and more plastic and less cow. There we go. And then there's just three screws which I shall put in the top and then we'll come back and finish the rest. With the entire top of the machine now fitted, you should be able to pull on this and see the bottom flap clip move. We can put our cyclone to chassis sealer back in. Only goes in one way, just line it all up and tap it home. Now for the bottom part. First we need to put the shroud on with the wider of the two ends at the bottom. Then we take our fins and our rubber seal and line up all the grooves on the seal with the fins on there. And then I'm going to put the one's got a broken fin. It's really not worth replacing it. A grey one will stick out like a sore thumb. Slide it up and then pull backwards on the fins until you hear a click. One, two, three. Good enough. It should just click back in all the way around. And that's this entire piece here done. Now we can get the bottom of the bin flap, fit the rubber seal. We take our bin, push one side of the flap hinge in, 
push down with the other until it clicks back into place. Then fit the bin back onto the cyclone, close the flap, check the flap still works. And we are done with the cyclone. Time to move on to the main machine and get rid of all of these parts. And we'll start with this pile of bits here. We'll need the chassis in a second. What we need to do first though is oh, put the rubber seals back on the motor. If they just push on, they'll be very hard and can be a bit of a pain if they grip as rubber will. Not a lot you can do that, but eventually it will just clip on very nicely indeed. Then we need to put the bottom rubber seal on, but one side is different to the other, matching the cutout in here. This is where it all gets a little bit fun. So plug your wires back in, brown to red, blue to black. And then just sort of feed the cable out of the hole just to get rid of the slack really. It's going to be a bit hard for me to describe this so I shall try but you basically want to keep the wires flowing around the motor so that it sits in there and this seal lines up. What we need is the thick part there and the thinner part there. And then pull it back out a bit, get yourself some, I use child's um, rubbish and blowing bubbles, bubble solution Pop. for mine. All you need to do, anything really works, you can use like WD-40 if you want. You want to coat the inside of the motor housing with a good layer. Reason I use bubble solution, it's incredibly slippery for this next be bit, but then it, it dries fairly innocently. You know, people use grease in these, and then the next poor sod to have the motor out of it just get caked in rubbish. And if you've done it right, the motor will push in. Your tabs will line up and your cable will pull out and the grommet will sit perfectly, which that has. So we shall take our housing. There is a little cut out at the top. You'll notice that the moulding stops. That goes at the top and it just pushes home like so. You going to come off again? No. Didn't think so. Oh, now I've got a wet finger. I'll pop this bit back on next, mainly because if you drop its little screw into the machine, you will cry because if you've already got this bolted up and you put this in last and you drop that screw, whole thing should really come out again. So next is to put this on. I like how we took it off, just sort of pull the sides apart as you stick it on and eventually it will just go and sit looking rather awkward at the minute and a little tip you want it to be in the back groove of this dual groove on the side of the housing but that's then where we pause that for a second and pop our rubber seal back on our elbow because it's a lot easier to do it now then we take our filter clip and push it in until it clicks or clips into place without a click. Then working around the back of the filter clip, we might just maneuver it about a little bit. We need to put this elbow back in like so. And then there is one screw at the back. It's the one that's stuck out on its own. So we'll do that now, because it will pull it all snug. Then we can take the motor housing complete, push the cable into the top hole of the chassis, and just sort of pull it out of the way a bit really. And then drop the motor housing on, and 
with a little bit of fiddling it will drop into place everything has to line up without being screwed in really otherwise something is amiss and then this is the really fun part you've got to sort of hold it and tip the machine any way that's humanly possible while keeping them together as much as you can and start getting some screws in this there's no real way to say this is any easier than this unless yeah unless somebody knows something that i don't ah, that's better Just one in the back opposite corner to hold it square and then I'll put the rest in and come back. With the motor housing fitted and just to stop the cable from smacking us in the face as we move around the machine we shall pop it back where it belongs into the spine which is up in the top hole and then you'll be able to just follow the bend of the cable really. And then on the back you'll need to just get a stout screwdriver so you don't pierce the cable and push it into its clips all the way around. And then at the front it just pulls and tucks into there. That's out the way now. We need to go back to the bottom where we can start to assemble our release valve. Not release valve, changeover valve assembling to start with out of all these pieces we need these two these big clips go at the back these little clips go at the front simply slide the carrier onto this part and then you need to manipulate it in loosely and then make sure that the clips are pushed right back into where they go it's easier done than said i will be completely honest with you and this is not the right angle to be doing it but eventually the planets will align and it'll all literally drop together with a snap and you can put the seal on the chassis all nice and done We can then put the seal back onto the bottom of the changeover valve and it's it, it's handed so there's only one way it goes on it's nice and simple then the spring sits in there not all the dysons have this spring and then you'll notice that these are larger than these and it only sits in one way which is I think with the big ones at the front yes yeah, you can try it so you get it right once you know that you can push it the correct way onto here checking though that it doesn't bind up the rubber seal if it does you need to just tweak it and eventually it goes on quite happily it's just because it's clean clean rubber grips There we go. Check it's still got a little bit of a bounce in it. And it just clicks in like so. Although it still shouldn't do that. And to stop it from doing that, we need the clip, which I don't seem to have. So I'm going to find the clip that sits underneath because we need to put this seal on. And we'll come right back. From underneath the machine now, we can grab our locking piece, push its spring onto where it goes and then from underneath the machine that way round with the spring below this squeeze the two tabs ever so slightly and it pushes up and clicks into place this rubber seal just needs to go back well, I can't the light's not in my favour here on the back one with the ridge just to make it a bit easier you to find and again there's not a lot you can do because you can't put this part in with this rubber seal on 
just doesn't work. You've just got to push it, twist it, pull it, and eventually it will just fly into place quite happily. So that is our entire changeover. It will now lock until you push that button. No, it doesn't. In fact, you want to have it well, up and locked, ready to receive its next part. But before we receive its next part, we'll quickly pop the filter back together. So we need all of the parts for the filter housing. Our base filter seal and the filter itself, which is all washed and looking very nice indeed. This seal has a do not remove on the top and this side up. So it's very easy to know which way to push it. Then you drop the valve in, drop the spring on and then without it flying everywhere, click it all down. And then pop your filter on as usual and it can sit in here nicely like so. Time for a big piece of the machine now and holding the ends out and it having to be a bit square we can put the head on and check that it still clicks up and down like so stop it from falling off we shall put our two circlips I suppose you could call them up hello I suppose you could call them on they just push on very easily with a little snap and we'll secure the head to the machine then we want to recline it ready for our freshly rebuilted clutch the belts in this machine were very worn and I do have a feeling that we are going to need our belt lifter but first and again this is going to be very difficult to show you you need to put this small belt over the motor spindle which is tucked down there you, go. you can just see it glinting in there and the easiest way to do this is to not is to hold the machine back up right not put the clutch in yet and with your thumb you can angle the belt over the motor spindle eventually there we go no there we don't go told you it is <laughs> fairly thinly and you don't want to twist the belt there we definitely go then we need to put the clutch they so difficult with new belts back into where it goes and then twist the belt a good few turns just to center it up and check it's all okay right with that there we can put our belt guide rod back in place it just pushes in and then with the machine locked upright, simply place the cover back onto the clutch and it will just drop in place very well indeed. Then take the three screws that hold it in. They have the fatter head than the rest of the screws, if you are paying attention. And just start to get the screws in before you have to let go or anything moves. You'll hear it click properly down when you do this bit so it's good even the back one which if you peer through you can line up to check that everything's in order and then finally the last one at the front marvellous that's our clutch in place next we can take all of this housing and our washed internal hose that has its spring back they do split though so if, it, if, if yours is split buy a new one taping it just doesn't work because it kills the other thing that it does now I have my grey end off here because I washed this hose and now I've got to try and twist it back on so I'll do that off camera and then we'll get going with fitting it Push the internal hose on first, 
and then these side pieces just slot into place. Then check that you have a good bounce. And if you don't, literally just twist this hose ever so gently until you do the bounce is critical. But not straight away, because we can recline the machine and then using the belt lifting tool, lift the belt up and prep our brush roll. This is not easy <laughs> at all. If you are of a slightly not strong nature, you will have to pay somebody to put new belts on your clutched Dyson. Whew. And yes, I've hurt my fingers so many times doing this. There we go. That's the belt lifted. Next, we'll take our brush roll bearings, a small flat base screwdriver and a tub of grease. You can't even see the bearings. There we go. And I'm going to fast forward this, but basically what I'm going to do is pop off this part. Take a little scoop of grease on the end of your screwdriver and just work it into the race of the ball bearing and it will quieten them down. These get very dry with age. So you want to do this and then give it a little bit of a wiggle just to spread the grease around and then do the other one. Once our bearings have been lubricated we can push them back into the brush roll. Haven't even got to do it fully yet. Just sort of, in fact, just do one end. Grab your rod, grab an end cap. Make sure that the end cap is pushed fully onto the rod. Push the rod through and then push in with the end cap and that will seat the bearing. Drop the other bearing over the axle on the other side and then push home on there. Twist both the end caps to be the same angle, you know, pointing the same way. If you've got edge cleaning bristles on your end cap, you do need to pay attention to which way they are facing as well. And then feed the brush roll through the belt, making sure that the end caps are sat properly in their slots, or as properly as they'll go, and then release the belt. Oh and then, uh, then faff around when it falls off the axle. Just one little twist, little twist. Got ya. And it will then pull the brush roll into place, give it lots of turns, just to make sure that nothing's bound up, you know, your belt hasn't twisted, or anything like that. With the base plate, we'll push the two edge corner brushes back in. Then take all of our wheels and all of our little axles, rub an axle just on a little smear of grease because these can squeal if they're a bit dry and manky. And then push them home and do that for all the rest. Then simply clip the base plate in and then with your coin slash screwdriver give each fixing a quarter of a turn. Quick check that nothing's bound up. And that's that part. While we are sat in this location we shall get our two washers, our one circlip and our axle and a pair of pliers. Then we'll take one wheel, feed the axle through, but stop before the end, little smear of grease just on the end where the wheel runs, just to make it a bit happier. Pop our washer on, and then feed it through the machine, put the washer on the other side, another smear of grease, just to quieten the wheel down, pop the wheel on, take our circlip 
and rest it on top of the axle. It will just happily sit there. Take your pliers and just crimp it down. Like so. Then we'll pop our vanity caps onto the side. And isn't it starting to look more like a Dyson now? We may as well take our pre, no, post motor filter and put the cover on it. Just because that will smarten up this bit no end and it just pops into place. A little bit tricky. Like that, leave the clutch cover off for now, please, until we've tested it. In fact, the only we can keep the camera here because we do have to take our U-bend and our clip, put the clip back on. It'll only fit on one way because it'll match up with the curvature of the part itself. And then clip it into place. Refit our other bin seal to the chassis. To wire the machine up, we take the rubber grommet that we took off earlier and slide it back over the terminal. There we go, like so. Take the end of our mains cable and push it into place, tucking the cable all throughout where it needs to go. You might need to manipulate it about just a little bit. There we go. Marvellous, then the neutral simply clips together and just slide this rubber boot over until it sorts itself out. And that sort of just sits to the side there really. Let's just pull the live cable out, there we go. Should all come together when we put the top cover back on. But we'll take our switch first, plug in both of the live cables. And then sort of make sure that everything's sort of out of the way where it should be. Take our switch and push it back into there. Turn the switch on because it drops it down. Hold up the button and very carefully because you don't want to damage the top of the spine. It's not terribly strong up here without this part on. We can manoeuvre it into place and click it down. Once it's clipped down, take a screw and stick it in the front. And this really will put it all together. Then check your switch, it still works. Well, still clicks anyway. Next, we can put our wand back together. Put the spring on the wand where it needs to go and then tuck in the top with its two tabs under first lining everything up you could in theory just push down with little click into place very nice indeed we will take our hose and clip it into the machine then click it to the wand slide it up to the end as normal and then Put the wand into the vacuum. The hose might need to be, you know, centered a little bit. While we're here, we may as well get some tools on the go. They're all individually wrapped. Of course they are. So we have our dusting brush. We have our upholstery tool. Again, they all need to be twisted to fit on properly and then finally we have our crevice tool like so then where is it here it is we can click the cyclone on and we're ready to test now the main way to test the machine is to turn it on <laughs> Lock the 
top of the wand until the release valve fires. That means it is fully sealed and working well. The next thing to do is to check the clutch works. <laughs> Check it basically starts and stops when it should. Then we can put the clutch knob on, check it moves with the machine, and we're done. So we are all good to go. I hope if you've been following along at home, you have been similarly blessed with success, and this has helped you out. This machine is like new again. It has as new suction, it will have as new grooming, it is just fixed. Stay tuned, although you might have already seen it, there will be or there will going to be a full after video of this machine comparing it to the before where it really didn't work very well. But this is the refurb video, so we are refurbished, we are done. Comment down below if you have any questions, I shall hop on and answer them. Other people probably will as well. Try and remember to put links in to all the bits I've had to buy for it because you probably need them as well. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.